A bolt is basically a cylindrical rod with thread cutting on it and a nut is likewise a threaded hole. And if you put them together and turn, the helix angle of the screw will create a linear movement. In this video, we'll make a linear actuator that works on this simple principle. Actually, this project is not new in this channel. I made a linear actuator about a year ago, but there were some important missing in the design. So I'm going to make a new one. Ok, now I'll start with this bearing block, that's where we'll fix the threaded rod and first, I'll put the inserts into these holes. The inserts are metric 3 and as you can see, the teeth are crossed as double helical gears, not straight. I was actually worried to use these inserts but after watching a few videos, I was absolutely sure and I suppose, these cross threaded inserts last up against to 180kg tensile load. This is really, really good. By the way, I didn't use any inserts in the previous version, instead I fixed with bolts. But these inserts look definitely better and really solid. In this version, I fixed the thread rod with these lock nuts. I fixed with those circle clips in the previous one, and I think it wasn't a good idea for high forces. So this time I used lock nuts. This is a very important spacer, because I'm going to fix the block, gears, motor, everything onto it. First I fix the motor with metric 4 bolts, and then I'll fix the bearing block I prepared with metric 3 bolts. An important shortcoming of the previous version was, there was no end stops. In this time, I use end stops to limit the piston. Now let's move on to the gearbox, but before, we need a lid to cover the gearbox we are going to make and I want it to be transparent. For this, I used PCV Waste CNC machining service. First of all, I go to PCV.com and I quickly prepare my order. It's really easy to order, just upload the module and choose the material. If you want to add something, here are the options and soon at your door. Here is the lid, just as I designed, looks perfect. By the way, I had ordered steel sheet from PCBWay before and it was really great. If you want to build something but can't because don't have the right tools, PCBWay do it for you and they have many services besides CNC machining. You can use 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding and PCB production services with Comfortable. This is my second order from PCBWay and they have done great job on both. Highly recommend. So I've added a link below and I'm sure you'll find something you need it. I attach the output gear and install a metric 2 cutter pin to lock it in place. This pink one is the middle gear and with that the gear ratio will be 9. In before was 6, so this version has 1.5 times higher torque. By the way, I have used helical gears before and their axial movement was a bit of a problem. And as you can see, the gears worn out. So this time I used herringbone gears to cancel the axial movement and... This is the gearbox cover. I put the inserts and drill a hole from here to take these wires out. Finally I place an 8mm ball bearing for the output shaft and now it's time for the feedback mechanism. I'm going to use this 10 turns potentiometer you see to get the feedback. I'm putting that to the cover and taking out the wires. Then I screw it tight. Before forget, I solder these right away. Now I let the gears in order to transfer the position of this output shaft to the potentiometer. In here, we can choose the modules of these gears very small. They don't need to be solid. They just need a torque to overcome the friction that occurs when turning the potentiometer. And as you know, that's such an easy. The reduction ratio here will be 8, and that means the output gear will turn 8 times less. And to calculate this ratio, we need to go back to threaded rod. The pitch of this metric 8 threaded rod is 1.25mm and also the stroke of the actuator will be 100mm. So, in order for the piston to complete its stroke, the threaded rod needs to rotate 80 turns. And if I attach the potentiometer to the output shaft directly, in this case, the potentiometer also needs to rotate 80 turns, but it can rotate maximum 10 turns. That's why I am adding an 8 gear ratio gearbox. So simple. So, when the threaded rod rotates 80 turns for a full stroke, the potentiometer will turn 80 over 8 equals to 10 turns, and which is also is literally what we want. Now let's see how it works.
It looks really nice actually. And the next job is the ant stops. I fixed the ant stops to the holes on this sled and I designed these holes with 3mm spacing so we can operate the piston in the stroke we want. Now the stroke is exactly 100mm and I am taking back the piston into zero position. I am also setting the potentiometer to zero and now let's see how much the potentiometer will turn when the piston reaches the end stop. In the piston's full stroke, the potentiometer rotated exactly 10 turns. Actually, I thought there was some loss in the gearbox and the potentiometer wouldn't rotate a full 10 turns, but it didn't. So, to protect the potentiometer, I take the end stop back one hole just in case. And now, the stroke is 97mm. So, when the piston goes a full stroke, the potentiometer will not rotate exactly 10 turns, it'll less. And now for the rest. First I placed the inserts into these holes and then lubricated the piston slide. I screwed the cover and... ready. By the way, the bottom of this pink gear is a bit crooked, and I guess it's somehow cousin wear, so I replaced it with a new one. Then I screw this cover tight to its place. Now the last job is to put an acrylic lid on that top side. I use the lid that piece of away sand for this. I almost screwed up here, but luckily nothing happened, it's all good. After a while I finally put on the inserts with my new awesome soldering iron. Then I guess I pushed my luck too hard and my precious soldering iron exploded. And it's done. I uploaded a simple code and it works as we want. By the way, with the motor I use a 3000 rpm and reduction ratio of 9 here, the threaded rod rotates at 330 rpm. With these values, the piston can make a full stroke in 14 seconds.
That was really good. I'm so surprised right now. It lifted almost 100 kg and not even any scratches. Gears, inserts are all perfect. Piston hole is a little crushed, but that's fine. And I think the most damaged thing here was the chassis. I can't believe these tiny bolts and inserts here lift up 100 kg. This thing is a monster. By the way, I don't know what to make with that. I'm wondering your most interesting ideas. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, like and share, and see you next time.